Well, hey everyone, my name's Hans, and today I'm going to teach you your ABGs. All right, so here is my John Deere two cylinder collection. It consists of the A, the B, and the G. All my tractors here are John Deere's styled two cylinders. Styled refers to the sheet metal on these as compared to the unstyled previous ones like from the 1930s. Uh, these just have a little bit more modern look for the 1940s. So all of these tractors are really meant to do similar things. They're all row crop tractors. Now the G does have a wide front on it. That makes it a GW and the W's for wide front. Uh, my A is just an A, the B is just a B. Now, if you have any of these uh, tractors that just have a single front wheel on them, for instance, if my B had a single front wheel, that would make it a BN. Same with the A, it would be an AN. But the regular row crop tractors with the narrow front, uh, it's just the letter. On these row crop tractors, uh, both of mine have the Rollomatic front end. You can see that here and here. Now, what the Rollomatic allows the tractor to do is the front wheels can go up and down independently. And that's nice when you're plowing, you can have the front wheels uh, go up and down over uh, furrows and it makes for a lot smoother ride than if they're just fixed. Now John Deere did have a standard front end that did not have the Rollomatic. Not as nice in my opinion. In terms of the, this lineup here, the B is the smallest in the lineup. Um, if you guys happen to catch one of my other recent videos where I went to a tractor show, there was an H for sale that was a good deal. I didn't end up getting that because just now is the, not the right time for me. You got to have storage if you want more tractors. I'm not wanting to push the storage situation right now, although I would love to have an H. So if I had an H, it would be the smallest one sitting over here. Now all of these tractors were pretty much used for pulling plows back in the day. Uh, these tractors replaced horses, so that's what they did. That was. That was one of the primary use cases for these tractors. The B is always known as a two bottom tractor. Uh, I'd pull a two bottom plow in pretty much most situations. The A would be a three bottom tractor. It's pretty comfortable pulling a three bottom in most soil conditions. The G was also probably known as a three bottom tractor, although I've seen them pull four bottoms. In the right soil conditions, they'll pull four bottoms all day long. For the styled tractors, the A's and the G's were very similar. But the G definitely had more torque. It's got more cubes. This engine, you know, if you were to compare it to a modern engine in liters, um, it's about 6.7 or 6.8 liter engine. So those two cylinders have roughly the same displacement as my Ram truck with the 6.7 Cummins in it. Now think about that for a minute. Two cylinders having 6.7 liters. That's a beast. Now, as far as more displacement, John Deere also had a Model D, which would go over there probably. And uh, that's another tractor I would like to add to the collection at some point. Once again, the problem is room. Now, all of these tractors have 38 inch rear tires. Now, on my particular tractors, the B has 12 by 38s, the A has 13 by 38s, and the G has 15 by 38s. Let me show you the rears of these tractors. You'll be able to see the rears are all pretty similar aside from the size differences. Configuration is pretty much the same. The B, I do happen to have a three-point hitch on it, and I do have a cylinder attached, but that could be attached to any of them. Um, there are differences in the sizes of the draw bars uh, that you know just goes along with the tractor size. As you go up through the models, the draw bar becomes larger. All of these tractors were originally meant to couple with a hydraulic cylinder for lifting plows. Now my G has something unique. It actually has a baker valve, which is what's in here. The baker valve kind of sits between the rear end and the uh, power troll unit, and it gives an extra set of remotes. So I have the two that were stock with the tractor, and I have an additional two from the baker valve. And, uh, you know, this is the stock lever to control the stock remotes. This is the lever to control the baker valve for the auxiliary remotes. All of them have 540 RPM PTOs. Having a three-point hitch makes these tractors really handy. Out of all these tractors, the B is most fuel efficient, obviously, because it's, it's the smallest. It's actually perfect size and power for a lot of utility type things, like 
pulling a bush hog. Um, this thing pulls a bush hog like a champ. It really doesn't use too much fuel. The other tractors would do awesome with a bush hog as well. They're just gonna be a little bit thirstier and use more fuel. Not an issue, they just have a higher cost of operation. The B was known as being extremely fuel efficient for what it is. It'll pull two bottom plow all day and, uh, and just sip fuel along the way. Although it's the smallest of this bunch, there are some definite advantages in cost of operation. They're all about the same in terms of maintenance. You know, the tractors are all extremely similar other than their sizes. So doing maintenance on the B is really the same as the A and the G for the most part, just minor differences. But, you know, if you can work on one, you can work on all of them. All of these tractors have electric start. This B is a 1948 model. This A is a 1950 model. The B and the A are most similar. The G is also a 1950 model, but it didn't have all of the same refinements as the B and the A. For example, when you look at the uh, front pedestal here, on the A and the B, they're very similar. With your throttle controls on the side here, things look about the same. On the G, it really looks like the unstyled G, um, so it didn't get the same updates when it came to that. It does have the same styled sheet metal. It kept some of the resemblances of the original unstyled G. Now very quickly, I'm gonna show you the basic startup procedures for each of these tractors so you can see how similar they are and you'll also be able to see the minor differences between them. Let's start with the B. So on the B, you're gonna make sure it's in neutral. You might have to adjust your throttle to where you know your tractor needs it. Mine wants about a quarter to a third throttle. Um, on this particular B, I don't have the sediment bowl on it. I do have a ball valve. That's something that I added just because I needed to fix my fuel shut off and that's what I had on me. I can always go back to the fuel sediment bowl if I want to. But regardless of what you have, you're gonna turn on your fuel. Once the fuel is turned on, you might have to uh, use your choke if the tractor is cold. And this is the starter button. Once again, make sure you're in neutral. Here we go. There we go. All right, so I went ahead and shut it off. Now I'm gonna show you the procedures for the A. The A is very similar. We're gonna come over here. We're going to make sure the tractor is in neutral, which it is. This particular tractor has a distributor versus my B has a magneto. That's why there was no ignition to turn on. On the A, we do have a distributor, so there is a key to give power to the distributor. I'm gonna turn on my key. My fuel is already on. This one has a three-way fuel valve. Your mi yours might or might not have that. I have my fuel turned on at the sediment bowl. So right now, I'm just going to engage my starter. Once again, we'll make sure we're in neutral. Here we go. And that brings us to the G. Now here comes the G. Last but certainly not least at all. On my G, I already have the fuel on, on my sediment bowl. Although this tractor was originally equipped with a three-way valve, it no longer has that because someone removed the small tank. I have my throttle pretty much at uh, about a third throttle. I'm going to engage the choke just a little bit because I know that's what it needs. I'm also going to ensure that we're in neutral. So now I'm gonna press the starter button to engage the starter. This G also has a distributor, which you can see over here. That's the reason why we have to turn on the ignition for this tractor. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the ignition. Now my switch might look a little bit different than yours if yours has electronic ignition. The switch on mine is not a factory switch, so yours might look a little bit different. If you guys have never seen a B, an A, and a G together, 
Hopefully this is a little bit insightful for you. This thing's been in my life basically as long as I've been alive. I acquired this A about a year ago here in Colorado, and I acquired this G earlier this year. I had always wanted an A and a G, so the opportunity arose for me to get them, and I did. Now the ground here is not quite even, so the B is the smallest of them all, as I mentioned. That is in reference to the height and the width. The B is two-thirds the size of the A. The B fits in my storage containers with no issue. The A also fits in my storage containers with no issue. Now, because those two fit, I just kind of thought in my head, eh, the G's probably gonna fit. That's why I went ahead and bought it when the opportunity came along. However, although the G is probably similar height to the A, it is quite a bit wider. And a previous owner of this G also cut down the axles. So these axles were originally even wider than they are today. And that's my main factor in why the G won't fit in my container. The axles are too wide. Now I'm not gonna chop them down any further just to fit it in the container. I don't like to do that. Whoever cut them, they actually did a pretty decent job. I mean, if you're gonna cut an axle, which I'm not extremely fond of, they did a pretty good job at it as far as making it even and looking good. I have no desire to extend these wheels out any further than the length of the axles are on here today. So the fact that they were cut down previously is not a problem for me. So in addition to being lined up in size, they are also lined up in power. The B is a powerful tractor, but it's the smallest of the three. So as you go up, they just get more powerful. And I'll tell you, this thing has an amazing amount of torque. All of these two cylinders have an amazing amount of torque. That's kind of what they're known for. But when you get up to the G, this thing's ridiculous. So I created this video just to be a high level overview of the differences between the B, the A, and the G. Now I'm not gonna stray too far from the John Deere's in this video. In my opinion, the M has similar power to the John Deere A. Now some of you red guys might dispute that and you might say that the M is more powerful than the A. I don't think so. I think they're pretty evenly matched. And if you put a G up against the M, I think the M's getting whooped. That's just my opinion. You guys might feel differently. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you would like to see more of these types of videos, let me know down in the comments. Hope you guys have a good day. See ya.